Thanks for joining the CAFE webinar. My name is Justine Chapel, and I'm the Communications and Marketing Manager for CAFE. Today, I'm going to be giving you eight reasons why you should use CAFE Jury Tools. While CAFE is great for collecting, organizing, and managing applications, it's also great for conducting your jury and scoring the applications all in one place. CAFE's jury module is included in the service fees that you pay for, and we just want to make sure that you're getting the full value, so I'm here to show you what you might be missing out on if you don't jury in CAFE. If you already use CAFE to jury, that's great. In addition to sharing these reasons, I'm going to be walking you through the jury process a bit, and hopefully you'll get a good review or pick up some good tips along the way. If you don't use jur uh, CAFE to jury, all of these reasons I'm giving you today will help you understand just how CAFE can streamline the process for you and ensure a consistent and fair jury. Ultimately, having a standardized jury process reflects well on your organization and artists appreciate knowing that they have a fair shot, so we're here to help you achieve that. Just as a quick overview, the overarching key items we'll cover include setting up the jury, viewing and scoring entries from the juror's perspective, reviewing scores and inviting entries, and downloading jury reports. So let's dive right in with our first reason for why you should be using CAFE to jury, and that is CAFE enables many different types of jury setups. Yes, CAFE is online based, but you don't have to be. So, you know, most common we see we have multiple jurors or maybe one juror logging in and scoring the entries individually on their own time. Um, you as the administrator can give them a window of time that they must complete their scoring by and they have to submit um, before then. Jurors can save scores as they go so that they can leave and come back. Um, and it's accessible to jurors anytime, anywhere, as long as they have an internet connection and a good device for viewing artwork. Or you can have multiple jurors meet in person to view and discuss the submission, but maybe each juror enters a score individually on their own separate devices. Each um, has their own, you know, laptop or computer or something, and they enter the score for each piece that are then um, averaged out. Or let's say you want to meet in person. That's great. You can have, like the other option, you can meet in person, but maybe only one person enters the group consensus score for each application. You can also do it in a way where you have one person um, projecting the applications um, enlarged in the room and you all discuss it. And then again, you know, one person enters a, a group score and you use those scores that you enter into CAFE to sort the entries between the invited folks and the not invited folks. Um, so that way only one person has to log in and the rest of the jurors can focus on viewing the artwork. There's a lot of other configurations you can do as, you know, kind of a combination of the three options I just gave. You really can just do whatever works best for you. Um, but having CAFE to be able to view and score the entries allows for flexibility depending on what you prefer in your setup. And I'll touch on some of these configurations as we go through the, the next topics. Um, but that's my first reason. CAFE makes it flexible for you to be able to jury your entries however you want. Now, before I get to the next reason, I'm going to actually head into CAFE to kind of set the scene for us as we start to demonstrate how the jury process works. So here I'm logged in as an administrator, and I'm going to head to events and management, which is where I am now, and click on the call we're going to look at today. Now, the important things for here to note are, you know, let's say this is the call that had closed the applications. Um, so everyone that has submitted are in the received status. That's where they show up when they get submitted. And you're just gonna wanna make sure before you start the jury process that everyone stays in the received status. Now you might want to review entries. You can click on the list and click on an application ID number to pull up the application. You can go through and review the application for any eligibility concerns or make sure that they have all their materials submitted. Maybe even because of that, you want to use the reviewed status. You can change the status to reviewed, and that will allow you to, you know, have that initial review process. Um, but just make sure when you, you know, come back here and you're ready to start your jury, even though you use the reviewed status, you're going to want to make sure once that process is done, you put everyone back into received. And that's because jurors can only see score or only score entries that are in the received status. They won't be able to see any application in any other status. So let's make sure we put this folk, um, this person back into received. 
Um, so that's just a little setup there, but um, the majority of our day will be spent in jury administration. And I'm going to go through, you know, all these steps as I kind of give you these um, top reasons for what makes CAFE so great for jurying. So, you know, we have our, in the jury administration portal, we have our call pulled up and we'll, we'll go through some of these things. The first thing that you'll want to do, or one of the first things, is to um, set up your juror accounts. So you will create a juror account for each um person that's going to be scoring entries. And that brings me to my next region, reason for why CAFE is great for this is you can assign jurors to multiple calls or reassign returning jurors. So um, actually in the survey we just conducted with our users, we found that some folks didn't know that they could use the same juror account for multiple calls or reuse jurors year over year. Instead, they would just create a new juror account um, for the juror, even if they've um, use that account with the organization cafe before. So, you know, you can come in here and go to the jury administration page and click add juror. Um, but that's only great if you know that this person has never used cafe to score their entries before, or to, um, never logged into your organization's calls before. So if you want to make sure that they don't already have an existing account, what you want to do is click on jury and click jurors. This will bring up a list of all of the active juror accounts that you have for your organization. You can also click show disabled to view the list of deactivated accounts. So, you know, check this list of active um, members, see if someone on here is going to be the, the juror for this call. And if they do already have this account, you click view juror. And you're going to just want to assign them to the call you're currently scoring. So in this case, this is this call here. So I just want to make sure that that's selected so that this particular juror has access. That juror will then use their existing username and hopefully the password. Um, if they don't remember their password, they can reset it um, through the login page. Um, but they'll use their same account information. And once you click save, they're assigned to the new call and they'll have access to those entries. If they're not on this active list, I recommend clicking show disabled to show the list of um, disabled or deactivated accounts. And if they are on this list, that's great. You can click view juror. Again, click it to assign to call. But then in this case, you also just need to make sure you set your status to active. Um, and that will reactivate the account. Again, the juror will use the same username. You can share this with them if they forgot it. Um, and then have them reset a password through the login page. Click save. And once that's done, if you did it correctly, you'll see them in the jury administration page and you'll see we have those two new folks that I added here. Um, so that's how you reassign jurors to a calls and you can do that for jurors that come back year over year or um, if you know that they've juried for you in the past. Um, you can't, if a juror has a um, username that they've come to cafe and juried entries before, but not with your organization, maybe they did it for a different gallery or um, entity, um, they'll have to create, you'll have to create a new account for them in that case, because you can't reuse the same juror account for multiple different organizations. It's all housed in so that you can only access your jurors information. And if they don't already have an account, again, you can click add juror here and you can click jury administration or pull up the jurors list and click add new as well to add um, the account and you'll just enter their information. Right here, you'll see that it's a kind of auto-filling information from my browser for my different logins that I have. Um, if that's the case, don't get concerned, just delete that and start new and enter the username that um, you'll be entering. That's the process for setting up the juror accounts. And then that brings us to the next step and my next reason for using CAFE, which is um, you can customize the scoring rate and the scoring style for your jury. So back in here, we're in the setup page and um, the scoring rate will be under the jury settings. Let's skip jury status for now. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but scoring rate is the way in which um, you'll have your jurors score individual entries. So you can set up three different options. You can do one through seven, you know, seven being the highest, one being the lowest, one through 20, or yes, no, maybe. Yes, no, maybe is kind of a nice option to give jurors so that they can make a quick decision. Is it going to be in, included in the event? Maybe they, or maybe they should be, or no. 
And so that's a nice one that's commonly used for um, app or calls that have a lot of applications. Um, but if you do need to get more granular and really scale the different entries, um, you can use some of these other options. If you conduct multiple jury rounds, which we'll talk about in a little bit, you can actually change the scoring rate for different rounds so that maybe you start out with a simple elimination round, yes, no, maybe, and then as you windle down the applications, you change your scoring rate to 1 through 7 um, to become, or 1 through 20 to um, have a little bit more of a scale there. Whenever you set your scoring rate, that's going to be the same option for all the jurors that you give them. And um, if you have multiple jurors, that um, CAFE will average those scores out amongst all the jurors so that, you know, the final score is um, taking consideration all the jurors' scores. And we'll talk about a little bit of that, um, how CAFE helps you with that math later on. The other thing you can do is click the or choose a scorecard style for your jurors. Again, whichever option you choose here will be the same amongst all jurors in the um, in the call. So you have different options here, and I'm going to kind of show you what they look like. So scorecard style, um, the slideshow view. I will pull up the help guide for jurors to show you kind of what this looks like. So I'm going to click on slideshow view, and I'll show you this little screenshot. So slideshow view looks like this. It's um, giving you the scorecard or giving jurors a scorecard against a gray background. And we'll go over this in a little bit, but you can have all the information included here. And essentially the juror will look at the application, review the artwork, enter their score in comments, click save. In that case, the system will then you know, move to the next application in the slideshow and they can work through it like that. That is a little bit different from the list view. And let's go to list view here. List view looks like this. It's against a white background and you're seeing one application here again. And you know, I'll, I'll take you through these in a little bit more detail in a minute, but you'll see the application, the jurors will give the score and comments. When they click, once they click save, it actually will scroll them to the next application in the list. So instead of it moving through a slideshow, it's more of a list and the jurors can kind of scroll up and down through the list um, to see what scores they're giving um, those entries. The final option you have is the grid view. Now, grid view is only available for calls that score by individual artworks. Um, there are calls that you can set up where you have multiple images per application or per artwork. And in that case, the grid view is not available. And that's because the grid view looks like this, where you're given very brief little cards of the images and only one image or every image is going to receive a separate score. So as opposed to having multiple images, um, these are just allowed for calls that score by each individual piece of artwork. And so the grid view is really nice because the jurors can swiftly view all of the artwork samples. They can click to enlarge, and I'm going to kind of demonstrate this again in a little bit. Um, they can view some information that they click icons, and then they can just easily score, you know, in this case, yes, no, maybe, and just go through them. And at the bottom of the page, click save, and um, they can get through a lot of entries very quickly. So this grid view is really nice if you have many different entries and the juror kind of wants to be able to kind of swiftly eliminate some folks or score really quickly. Choose the scorecard style that you think is best for your jurors and um, they can go with that. They can also let you know what they prefer, um, especially if you just have one juror. You can always flip through the different styles and see which one they like best. But, you know, having a standard scorecard style for all jurors does kind of allow for, you know, consistency in the view of the artwork, which is something that artists do value when um, they apply to cafe calls. Moving on to kind of the next portion of um, what the setup is, let's go to our next reason for why you should use CAFE and to jury, and that is CAFE auto-populates all the artist information, application materials, and images. So let's go back into here. Um, actually, let's go back to our scorecard. And I'm going to use this slideshow as an example. So when CAFE creates these scorecards for you, it pulls in all the information that you, the jurors will need to see. Um, at the top, you'll get the artist ID and application numbers, um, the artist name with a caveat there that I'll talk about. If you activated categories for your call, you will see the category the artist chose. 
In the scorecard, you also get to click to view the form answer. So this will bring up all of the application questions you had for artists and all of the, this particular artist's answers to them. Um, again, you'll include the work samples. Now the work samples will also include all the information that artists um, gave with that piece of art when they uploaded it to CAFE. It all just pulls in there, you know, the titles, the year completed. Um, you can click to view even more details about the medium and the description and more things about the, um, the artwork. If you activated the artist statement option, it will pull in the artist statement from that artist and you can, the juror can view that right there on the page. So having all of these things are really nice to, you know, you don't have to do it manually, Cafe does it for you. So um, a little bit about the setup too. Um, in the setup section of the jury administration page, there's a few things you can do to kind of change what information is actually displayed to jurors. So first, for example, the blind jury process, you can click this to um, disabled or active if you want to hide or show the artist's name to the jury. So if you want to make sure that artists' names aren't shown, you make sure that this is active. But if you don't care or if you prefer artists' names to be visible to the jury, make sure you save that as disabled. And then under scorecard display and application questions, you can choose to hide certain information from the jurors, um, specifically about artwork if price is not important to jurors or actually would you know, impede their ability to um, score the artwork fairly, you can hide the price. If you wanna hide the year, the description as well, you can do that. Um, again, checking the box means you're hiding the piece of information from jurors. In application questions, here you'll see a whole list of all the application questions you created for your call. And if that's information that's not necessary for jurors to see or if something you want to hide, you can also click to hide that information. So, you know, things about the member reception in this um, example, you can hide about it. Um, you don't care if jurors see how they heard about the call. Um, you can hide that those pieces of information. Just make sure in all these settings you're doing in this section, you click save anytime you want to save those changes. And the final steps of setting up your jury is to set that jury status to in progress. That's what we already have it set here. Um, but when you come to the jury portal for the first time, it will be set to not yet started. It's important to set it to in progress because one, that will give jurors access to actually view the scorecards. And then two, that will hide the artist status from their view. So when they see their application is received from their end, once the jury process starts and you put this in, in progress, then they won't be able to see their status. And that's so that you can make their changes to invited or not invited without them seeing it. Instead, they'll just see the fact that the jury status is ongoing. So make sure you set that to in progress and again, click save. That brings me to the next reason I have for using Cafe to Jury, which is jurors will see the artwork images exactly as they were uploaded by the artist. So this is just ensuring, you know, consistency in the jury process and fairness. Um, since you're not setting up the jury process manually or printing applications to be reviewed, everyone has the same setup for how their work is displayed. Let's take a look at what the jurors see in the um, in Cafe. So I'm going to log out here and I'm gonna log in with a juror account. Um, in CAFE, it's the same login page. It just depends on if the username is a juror username or an administrator username. And another thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about assigning juror accounts, you as the administrator can set up your own juror account and that will allow you to log in and view what I'm about to show you and just kind of take a look at what the jury looks like and what the jurors should expect. You don't have to score the entries, and if you do score the entries and you want to remove that from consideration, there's a way that you can remove your scores. So don't feel the need that you know you don't get to see what it looks like to the jurors. You can create your own account, and it just depends whichever username you're logging in with that will um, give you that certain view. So I recommend creating a juror username for yourself if you're interested. So let me log in to the juror side. And you'll see it's a very simplified view of CAFE, not very many menu options, and I'm just selected on the you know, jury page, and I'm going to click the call that we're working with today. Now, in this case, this particular juror has scored all the entries, um, but if they hadn't, they'll have you know the numbers under unscored instead. To view the actual 
um, scorecards. I'm going to click on the number of the applications I'm going to pull up. I can do it by different categories that I had set up, or I can do it by just all of them. And so you'll see here we have the grid scorecard that allows you to view all of the artwork images and score pretty fast. But again, we're looking at the artwork images now. So, um, you know, you can see these thumbnail images, but let me actually pull up and it will appear in a pop-up window. So here's the pop-up window. This is what it will look like when the juror is viewing it in full screen. They can see the, um, the artwork here. This is the little information icon with all the different artwork details and they can close that. Um, so they can view the artwork. What's great about CAFE as well is that it has a Zoom function. So jurors can use the zooming in and out to view more details. If they zoom in, they can also click and drag to you know, navigate around the image. I'm not going to click it because it would mess up my screen share, but I'm going to, so they can also click it in full screen to see um, that full size images in full screen. So um, the way that CAFE presents artwork images, and like I said, that, you know, jurors see the artwork images exactly as they were uploaded by the artist. The, all that means is when an artist uploads an image to CAFE, they will see the image in the fullest size that the artist uploaded. Um, so it doesn't scale down the images that an artist uploads so that it looks prettier in the jury. It actually shows on that full sized image that the artist uploaded. Now artists must meet a minimum image size when they upload to CAFE to ensure that it's large enough for jurors to view. Um, artists are also encouraged to submit an image as large as possible, so long as their file size doesn't exceed the limit of five megabytes. But you know the image dimensions can be as large as needed to be able to show as much um, detail in the photo if they as they want. Um, it is up to the artist to determine what the quality of image that they're submitting. So as administrators, we encourage you to encourage them to upload you know large size images and high resolution images of their work. Um, but for jurors, they do get that full view. So, you know, nothing's being scaled down for them. And the um, larger the image, let's see if I have an example of a really large one in here. I sometimes do. It's one of these options here. <laughs> this might be the one because it's going to take a while to load. So, um, yeah, this is an example of a really large image. And that's because, and you can see it because I can zoom in a lot. Those smaller images, I can't zoom in. Far. Um, but you can see just how far I can zoom in and see all that great detail in this painting. Um, so that's really neat and really awesome with CAFE. So again, you know, you're seeing the artwork in a fair and consistent view and jurors all have, you know, artists will get the same view from the jurors. Moving on a little bit with the scoring process, like I said, I was going to talk about. Um, with CAFE, you can conduct multiple scoring rounds and keep track of the scores for each round in one place. To boil off that, let's just talk about what it's like to score. Again, like I said, they can view those full-size images and go through and score the entries. Once they've scored the entries on the page, make sure they just click Save My Scores, and that will save them to the da database. So let's say this juror went in and they scored for round one. Let's say we're going to have multiple rounds. Um, they scored and, you know, their unscored column is zero. That's great. That means everything is saved. Um, I'm gonna also going to show you, let's go back to page one. Um, jurors can also, if they click this little icon here, it'll pull up the scorecard that looks similar to that slideshow view. And this is where they can add a comment. So um, they can enter comments and click save. And I'll show you what that looks like on your end. Um, so I do recommend jurors enter comments because you know that helps with if you do provide feedback back to artists with their juror scores. Um, you know it has that transparency element to show how decisions are made and can be used to give that feedback to them. So um, that's how you would enter a comment as a juror. And now I'm going to log back out and log in as my administrator account. Got to enter the code here. Okay, back into the administrator side. Once the juror has scored all of the pieces for round one, you can go in and click view scored applications. And this will show you, yep, okay, I can see the comments that were made and I can see all the scores that were entered. Um, and um, 
this is might be a stage where you want to eliminate folks. I'm not going to touch on this process just yet. That's going to wait for a couple minutes here. Um, but let's say you do the process of eliminating some applications and put, putting them in the not invited status. And now you're ready for round two. Now you can either have the same juror or Leanne, in your case, different types of different jurors log in. And you can do that um, and have them do round two. Now for round two, you would just switch your jury round to round two and click save. You'll see here that that does um, kind of make the scorecards blank and allows the jury to enter new scores. Um, so for the sake of just showing you the whole process, I'm gonna go back into my juror account. And you know, assuming this is the same juror, you'll see now they have unscored applications and they can enter new scores for round two. And this allows them to make that further decision of, okay, now do I want to invite them or not? Maybe you even use one through seven in this case or one through 20. So um, the juror will log in, do, do round two, and then the same process goes back and you can log out. I'm not gonna score those, but um, we're gonna log back in as the administrator. Oh, there we go. And once round two is conducted, you can repeat the process of either eliminating folks, or if that's it, you only need two rounds and all of the highest scored entries are gonna be the ones that are invited, you can stop there. You can have as many rounds as needed to be able to windle down. Um, so what is nice about these is that even though a juror might score for round um, two, you can always revert back to round one to look at the scores from round one. This is nice because it just, it, it shows, you know, in application what score they got in round one and what score they got in round two. And um, you can download that information I'll show you later um, so that you can have that historical information. Some folks do like to essentially conduct multiple rounds in the same technical round one, that's fine. You can have jurors score um, in round one, and then when you're ready and you've eliminated some folks, you're ready for them to revisit the applications, they can come back in and update their score. But in that case, you won't be able to see the historical information about you know what score they got in each round. And the jurors would have to keep track of which scores they've updated versus which scores were still from round one. Um, so it's possible, and some folks like to do that. That's fine. Like I said, CAFE is allowing you to do it however you want to do it. But um, I do recommend doing it in separate rounds so that you can have that information. And that's what I meant by how you can score multiple rounds. I'm going to move on to our next reason why you should use CAFE to jury, which is CAFE will do the math for you as you sort entries between invited and not invited. Um, so this is the time where I'm going to show you how you use CAFE to do this sorting process. Okay, so we have our scores in round one, and we can see those all in here, and now we're going to sort it between invited and not invited. To do that, I'm going to click on the Manage tab. Then I'm going to say, first, I want to eliminate the applications um, from consideration that have the lowest score. So I'm going to click change status to not invited. So this is the page where um, some folks get hung up and that's okay. I'm going to show you how it works. And we always have help resources and our team available to help if you need it. But it is pretty straightforward. And like I said, CAFE does this math for you. So you don't really have to worry about it too much. Um, so in this stage of putting applications in the not invited status, the first thing I'm gonna do is select all of my categories so that all of them are affected in this process. If I wanted to do it one category at a time, I'll just make sure that that one category is checked. But in this case, I want all of them. Now, the, the thing you have to pay attention to is the minimum cutoff score. So this will be set to the average score given for that category. And um, how you do this is, if you want to set it to the average, that's fine. You can leave it as the minimum cutoff score. Any application that received a score below the minimum cutoff score will be set to not invited. So this is saying, what's your cutoff? Okay, anyone that didn't make this cutoff is going to be eliminated. So 
you can set it to the average that will make it so that you know you can see a good chunk of applications get eliminated from consideration or you can change this cutoff score to your own thing maybe if you're using a 1 through 7 or 1 through 20 scoring rate you have a number in mind that says okay anyone that didn't receive above a 4 out of 7 um, I want to eliminate so I'm going to set that to 4 and so that's your cutoff maybe so maybe you have that number in mind Maybe if you want to, if you're using the yes, no, maybe scoring rate, which is what we're using here, the important thing to, to know in this scenario is that a score of yes is equal to a score of three. A score of maybe is equal to a score of two. And a score of no is equal to a score of one. So keep that in mind. And that's how those are used in this, um, in this stage is when you're using yes, no, maybe it all gets converted to numbers. So let's say I have these scores. I want to eliminate anyone that didn't receive a yes. Okay, I only want to keep those yeses. In that case, I'm going to set my scoring rate to three so that anyone who scored below a yes, aka below a three, is going to be eliminated. Now, maybe I wanted to include the maybes into the next round, and I don't want to eliminate the maybes just yet. So I'm going to set it to two so that anyone below a maybe or below a two is gonna get eliminated. So whatever one works for you, you can enter that in. There's another way of doing this, which is taking a look at the scores um, in the other page, let's say here. Um, I'm gonna view scored applications. You can also download the report. Let's say I wanna sort this page by average score. So I'm gonna click it so that it um, is sorting now lowest to highest or highest to lowest. And let's say I know I want the first highest score 10 applicants to move forward. So I can count, you know, or maybe not 10, maybe like 20 or so. So I can, you know, count through 20 and see what the score is at that stage. In this case, with a yes, no, maybe, it's going to be a little tricky because you're going to get folks that are tied. Um, but if you use one through seven, you can essentially count the applications as they're sorted to say, okay, I need only 15 folks can be allowed in the next stage. What's the score at 15? Oh, it's a 3.7. Okay, so I'm going to set my cutoff score to 3.7 so that anyone who didn't score um, 3.7 or higher will be eliminated. That's a little bit more of an involved process, but if that's something you want to do, you can totally do that. So back to the stage. Let's say I do want to set my minimum cutoff score to three so that anyone that did not receive a yes, specifically a yes, is going to be eliminated. So I'll set that minimum cutoff score to three for both categories and click show applications. And you'll see here, um, you know, obviously you get the numbers of how many you're about to eliminate or be not invited and how many you're going to make to, or how many are going to be left in the jury. So you can see here, I'm going to kind of review this list here. And this kind of matches up with what I was, um, what I was intending. I want anyone that received a yet, um, either a no or a maybe, or in this case, one that didn't average out to a complete yes, because there's two jurors in this case, yes and no, um, they didn't receive high enough score. So um, this is going to be the cutthroat stage of in this example, because I'm only letting folks that received a yes or two yeses allowed, but you can set that cutoff score depending on how you, you know, want to average those. Um, so CAFE does the math for you, it puts it all on this list, and then you just click change status. Once you click change status, those applications will be moved to the in, um, not invited status, and I can verify that by going to events management, and you'll see I have those 25 applications in not invited. Only eight were left. I know I've been using a lot of terms like eliminating applications and removing them, but don't worry, no applications are actually removed from CAFE or eliminated um, in a sense. If you messed up and you're like, oh, I eliminated way too many folks, all you can do, what you can do is, you know, revert the application statuses back to received by doing this bulk change back to received, and you can do the process over again, with the new number. So nothing's actually being removed. It's not as scary as it seems. You're just changing the status to not invited. In this case, I'm gonna leave folks in um, not invited. 
Okay, so in that case, once I have, you know, those eight folks left, maybe you have more than eight and you want to actually continue to eliminate, that's when you would change your round to two and continue scoring. But let's say I want to move forward with these eight applicants and they're going to be the ones that are, you know, participating in this event. So I'll go back to manage and I'll click change status to invited. Again, I'll select all my categories. Now, in this case, we have a maximum cutoff score. So in this stage of changing status to invited, the maximum cutoff score is going to mean that anyone who scored above the cutoff is going to be moved to invited. You know, anyone that made the cut is going to be moved to invited. Um, it's going to be default to zero because in this stage, we are just ready to move everyone to invited. You know, these folks in received are the ones that made it through the elimination and I want to continue on. So I'm going to move, I'm going to keep that as zero. You could also change this number though, if you are like, okay, we still need to make one more little cut. And so I really want anyone that scored above, you know, a five out of seven or something like that to be able to, um, move forward and then I'll deal with those folks that didn't make the cut and just change those to not invited. So if you want to move everyone, just leave it at zero, click show applications. Again, you'll see these folks. These are the ones that received a yes from the juror and um, you'll see those scores there. If you want to make any last minute changes to not invited or received or waitlist, you can make that manually from this status drop down here. I don't know if this is used very much, but it's there if you need it. And you'll just choose that there, click change status. And there we go. Those are moved to invited and you'll go to events management and you'll see, yep, those are in invited. We have no one left in received, which means when you come back to the jury portal, you won't have any applications in the received um, status or in the jury and the jurors won't be able to see the applications anymore. Now, if there were some stragglers, some applications that didn't seem to change to not invited or invited, that seems odd. The reason is because the juror might not have scored that piece. So you really wanna make sure score, jurors score every single um, application, even if they only care about entering a score for their yeses. Be sure they still mark their decisions um, that they don't want in it, the application and make sure that they actually score it with a no so that every application actually gets a score and that can be referenced later on um, and so that the, the sorting process works out right. But if there were any stragglers that didn't receive a jury score, you can work with your juror and just determine if they should be in or out and then change the status of that application manually. I know that was a long-winded process of how to sort the entries, but I hope that was pretty clear. And like I said, we have the help center available with the jury help guide to be able to um, walk you through this process. So the last reason that I have for you for why you should use CAFE to jury your entries is you can have access to downloadable jury reports. So as you saw, CAFE saves the scores and comments from the jurors for each round, and you can access this information at any time when you log in. Now, um, because you can't click view scored application at this stage because no applications are in the receive status, that's okay. Um, I know the you know other view of being able to view the scores is really nice um, when you're in the jury, but um, don't worry, you can still access that information by going to actually the finalize tab. And so here is where you can um, save each round scoring history. So first you'll select the round that you want the scores from. This one is only giving me the one as an option because we didn't actually score round two in this example. Then I can click download round one scores to automatically download a spreadsheet, or I can click view scoring history. You'll have to select the round again and then just click go. And that will show you the list of applications. Um, and just like we saw before, all the scores and possible any um, comments that were made. So um, you can kind of, there's the comment. You can kind of go through um, this page here if you just want to view it. Or at the bottom, you can click download and that will also download the spreadsheet. It's also nice because, oh, it's not going to um, show it because they're in invited, not invited. If I wanted to, I could log out and go back into the jury um, page to show you that jurors also have a download scoring history button that they can download the scores that they made. They won't be able to download other jurors scores, but they can download their own scores and um, see and save that information if they 
if they feel like they want to do that. So because you can download these um, scores and you can download these scores at any time for your current calls or even at, uh, archived events, you can come to this list and choose an old exhibition and download the scores for that. It might just take a second to load. Um, you can do that. And so CAFE saving this information for you allows for better organization. You can, you know, come in and download these reports um, and you can save it for whatever need you have. Maybe you want to share the scores and comments with artists. If someone reached out to you and asked for that information, you can pull it. Um, maybe you have legal and accountability reasons to download and save it locally to your computer. But just know that CAFE always keeps this information for you and you can access it if you have an active contract with CAFE. So um, it makes it really easy to be able to um, keep that, that data year over year and just helps you stay organized. So, you know, that's it. Once you have sorted your entries between invited and not invited, you can move on to notifying artists of the results. And um, you can do that in the event communications page. You can notify artists. Um, you can send one email to the batch of invited artists, one email to the batch of not invited artists. And then there you go, that's your notifying process and you're done. Um, you would then come to um, the jury administration page and change the jury status to complete. That then republishes the status on the artist side so that they can see their status if they were invited or not, in addition to receiving your notification. So if you're not using Cafe to Jury, um, you won't be able to use that notification portal in communication looks like this. Um, you won't be able to use that because um, unless you first sort your entries manually between invited and not invited. And if you have a lot of applications, that can get very tedious to be able to sort, you know, oh, who, which one received the high scores, which ones we're inviting, you have to do that all manually. Um, but if you are following the process and using the jury portal, that will put you right into the next stage of notifying artists. So like I said, you don't have to use Cafe to Jury, but you are paying for the service for that and it makes it really easy. The first question I have is, do you have to keep once view style for the whole jury process? No, very similar to how I described, you can do different scoring rates for different rounds. You can also do different scorecard styles for different rounds. Um, maybe the jury wants to use that grid view and the yes, no, maybe um, to really make those swift decisions. But in later rounds of the jury process, you wanna give them a different view. You can you know, switch that to slideshow or list and they can have a different view of it. Do you see a question? Only the admin can change the rounds? Yes, that's correct. Um, so if, if a juror wants to create their own mini rounds where they go through and score, and then maybe they go back in and they update their scores based on their first decisions, they can do that. That's not you know an official round, but only the administrator can come in here and change the round. Even if you assign yourself as a juror, you don't have to score, do you? That's correct. You don't have to score and um, if you do end up scoring and you kind of want to, you know, remove your scores from consideration, you just have to come to your um, juror account in this list and click this trash icon and that will remove your scores from the jury. Um, you can, if you make a mistake and accidentally click this, you can click it again to restore the scores, but you only get a you know, small window of time to be able to restore. Um, so if you wanna remove the scores and you don't care about it, just click remove, and that will make sure that your scores aren't in consideration. So that's how you do that. But you don't have to, you can always log in without even clicking any sort of scores and be able to just review it as a juror. Can you go over how juror and admins can look at the accepted entries? Okay, so if you want to view the accepted entries as an administrator, that's easy. You just go to events management and you click on invited and you can click on the application ID number to pull up the application. The other option and the way to have jurors look at the accepted entries is to make sure that these are set to received. So I can just quickly set this to the received status here. Go back to the jury portal. Now, if I click view scored applications, these are those entries there. Why are there more than, oh, I accidentally moved all of them. Anyway, 
moved your accepted entries into received, then the juror can log in and view the accepted entries. And you can log in either as a juror or come back here to the jury admin page and review the accepted entries. Just make sure when you're done reviewing the accepted entries that you move them back to the receipt or back to the invited status so that you know who was actually supposed to be in there. Now I've messed up my sorting, so I'd have to go through that and set it up again, but um, yeah. Can you have different jurors for categories of art like 2D or 3D? Yes, you can. So in this case, we have 2D or 3D set up, and um, it kind of just depends on how you organize it with your individual jurors. If you tell a juror to only score the 2D art, they would come in, this is the jury side, they would come in and they would say, okay, I'm only scoring 2D art, then I'm going to click on the 2D art category and only score 2D art. It's important to know that they do have access to all the categories, so you're going to have to just like work with them to make sure they're only scoring the category that they're allotted, um, but that's one way that you can um, do that and you can just, outside of CAFE, assign um, verbally assign <laughs> jurors to different categories. And that concludes our webinar for, you know, the eight reasons why you should use CAFE to um, conduct your jury process. I hope you're convinced or got a good review of how the jury administration process goes. Thanks again for joining us and be sure to join our next webinar. Bye.